So, in this example, you'll be told, determine the stationary points of the surface f of xy is equal to x cubed minus 6x squared minus y squared. And their nature. So, the first thing they want you to do is to determine those stationary points. Then, the next thing you, you describe their nature. Is that okay? So, we start. For you to determine the stationary point and their nature, you must get all those six partial derivatives because we have two variables here, isn't it? Are we together? Yes. So, the first one, no, you don't have late and you make noise. So, the first thing you do. <laughs> The first thing you do, you differentiate f partially with respect to x. Are we together? So if you differentiate f partially with respect to x, partial derivative is denoted as a subscript, okay? If you differentiate f partially with respect to x, it means only x is a variable, anything else is a constant, isn't it? Yes. So here, x cubed partially with respect to x, you get 3x squared, isn't it? Then here, if you differentiate 6x squared, you get minus. 12x. If you differentiate negative y squared, what do you get? Zero. Because you are doing it partially with respect to x. Meaning anywhere you don't see x is a constant, isn't it? Yes. And if you differentiate a constant, you get zero. So we've learned this. So it means this, this partial derivative with respect to x will give us two more, isn't it? So the first time we differentiated partially with respect to x, we want to differentiate it again. Partially with respect to x again for the second time. Are we together? If you differentiate this for the second time partially with respect to x, it means only x is a variable, isn't it? So we get 6, 6x if you differentiate 3x squared, isn't it? Then if you differentiate minus 12 of x, you get negative 12 because we are doing it partially with respect to x. Only x is a 6 6 plus 16. This one is 6, good. This one is 3 times 6x minus 12. Very good. So you go here next. You differentiate it for the first time partially with respect to x, isn't it? Yes. Then you are doing it for the second time partially with respect to y. So if you are not differentiating it partially with respect to y, only y is a variable, isn't it? So it means anywhere you don't see a y is a constant, isn't it? So it means there is no y a if you differentiate this, you get zero, partially with respect to y, isn't it? If you differentiate this term partially with respect to y, you get zero. Because only y is now treated as a variable in partial differentiation, isn't it? So in the end, we found when we differentiate partially with respect to x, we have 3x squared minus 12 of x. Then this has given us two more. If you differentiate it for the second time with respect to x, you got 6x minus 12. The first time with respect to x, the second time with respect to y, you got zero. Are we together? Are we together? Yes. Then you go again, you now want to differentiate this function partially with respect to, to y. We now want to differentiate this function partially with respect to y. So if you differentiate it partially with respect to y, it means only y is a variable. Anything else is a, is a constant. So if you differentiate x cubed partially with respect to y, you get zero because there's no y here, isn't it? If you differentiate minus 6x squared partially with respect to y, zero, because there is no y there. Are we together? Only y is a variable when you are doing partially with respect to y, okay? If you differentiate minus y squared partially with respect to y, minus 2y, you are done, isn't it? Then this is to give us two more, isn't it? So the first one will be, the first time we differentiated it partially with respect to y, we now want to differentiate it again partially with respect to y. Are we together? If you differentiate it again partially with respect to y, only y is a variable. You get negative 2, isn't it? Then you go, the first time we differentiated partially with respect to y, the second time we want to do it partially with respect to x. So if we now want to do it partially with respect to x, only x is a variable, isn't it? So if only x is a variable, if you differentiate this, you get? Meaning negative 2y, there is no x there, so it's a constant, isn't it? So in the end, we find that differentiating the first time partially with respect to y, you have negative 2y, then 
difference. The second one, with respect to y, again you get negative 2. If the first time was with respect to y, the second time with respect to x, we found 0, isn't it? Are we together? Now you can see, we now have all the 6 partial derivatives. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, isn't it? After getting all those 6 partial derivatives, we now determine the stationary point, isn't it? We know at the stationary point, the derivative of the curve is 0, isn't it? Because it is a fat function of two variables, we are talking about partial derivatives, isn't it? So at the stationary point, at the stationary point, all points, at the stationary point, all points, the derivative of the curve is 0. So the derivative is either partially with respect to x or partially with respect to y. So at the stationary point, partially with respect to x is 0 or the derivative partially with respect to y is 0. Are we together? So you substitute your f of x you found to be 3x squared minus 12x to be equal to what? 0. Your f of y you found to be negative 2y to be equal to what? Now from here it is direct, you can see the y value you can get direct from the second equation, isn't it? So you simply, this is the first equation, this is the second equation. So this second equation you simply divide both sides by negative 2. You get y to be? To be 0, isn't it? Are we together? Are we together? Y is? Zero because these two equations are simultaneous. Meaning when y is zero, what will be x? Are we together? When y is zero, we now go with it to the first equation. Are we together? When y is zero, what will be x in the first equation? Is that okay? So in the first equation, you can see there's no y, meaning we will get the value of x, and those will be the values of x when y is what? When y is zero, because these are simultaneous equations. Are we together? So in the first equation, we have three. 3x squared minus 12 of x is equal to 0. So the moment we get the value of x here, those will be the values of x when y is what? When y is 0. So see, we divide all through by, by 3, isn't it? This is quadratic. This is quadratic. So if you divide all through by 3, what do you have? x squared minus 4x is equal to? That is a simplest form, isn't it? So you can see this is a quadratic equation and from this correct equation you can factorize out x isn't it so we have x into x minus 4 is equal to 0 so it means either x is equal to 0 or x minus 4 is equal to 0 are we together see that is how to solve a correct equation so if x minus 4 is equal to 0 what does that imply x is equal to so it means when y is 0, x is 0 or x is 4. So we have two stationary points. Are you seeing that? We have two stationary points. So the first stationary point you can say x1, y1. When x is 0, you can see y is 0. Are we together? The second stationary point x2, y2. When x is 4, when x is 4, you can see y is Zero because this was the value of y for both x, isn't it? Meaning x is zero and y is zero, or x is four and y is zero because this y is equal to zero was the solution of this first equation, isn't it? Simultaneous equations. Are we together? So we have the two stationary points. Are we together there? After getting the two stationary points, we now want to determine their nature, isn't it? We want to determine their their nature. So how do we determine the nature of these two stationary points? We use the discriminant which is defined by the determinant of the Hessian matrix, isn't it? So we have f is a function of x, y. So if you want the discriminant, you get the determinant of a Hessian matrix. So there are two variables here, x and y. So if there are two variables, it means the Hessian matrix is a, is a two by two matrix, isn't it? Are we together? So you put your f when you want to construct, then you start. The first variable here is x. So x form the first row. Partially with respect to x, partially with respect to x, you are done with the first row. Are we together? The second variable is y, y forms the second row. Partially with respect to y, partially with respect to y. Are we seeing we've defined all rows? Yes. We now define column, isn't it? x is the first 
Vara Bolia, so X form the first column. Partially with respect to X, partially with respect to X. We are done with column one. Are we together? You move, why is the second vara Bolia? Why forms the second column? Is that okay? So, with the partial respect to Y, partial respect to Y. So, you see, you constructed a two by two. Hessian matrix, isn't it? Now, we now want to use this. This determinant is what is the discriminant, isn't it? So, we now want to start with the first point, which is. 0, 0. So for this point zero, 0, what is the discriminant? Meaning, for this point zero, 0, what is f of x, x? <laughs> f of x, x, you have, you have there as, look at your f of x, x. f of x, x is 6 minus 12 over. We together. But look, for this point, we want to put that f of x, x. Here we have f of x, x. Here is f of x, y. Here is f of y, x. Here is f of y, y. So we want to start substituting. What is this f of x for this point? Meaning where there is x, you put the value of x for this point, isn't it? The value of x for this point is what? It's zero. So if you put zero there, you remain with negative. Meaning f of x, x for this point is negative. Are we together? Then you move to the next one, f of x, y. What is f of x, y? C is zero. So it doesn't have any like so well, so it's just a constant the way it is, isn't it? Are we together? You move to the next one is f of y. What is f of y x? It is zero. It is already a constant, so we don't need to substitute anything when it is already a constant, isn't it? You move to the next one, f of y y is negative two. Negative two is already a constant, so we don't need to substitute anything. Are we together? So, what is this determinant to give us the discriminant? What is this determinant? See, the product of the main diagonal minus the product of the minor diagonal. So, the main diagonal is negative 2 times negative 12, you get 24 minus 0 times 0, you get. So, at the end, you get 24. So, you can see 24 is greater than. So, we see when the discriminant is greater than 0, then it is a shadow. A shadow point, meaning the point zero zero, it therefore implies the point zero zero is a shadow, is a shadow point because the discriminant of this point is greater than zero. Are we together? So we determine the nature of this first point to be a shadow, to be a shadow point. Is that okay? Are we together? It is a shadow point. Let's go to the second one. The second point is zero, is four. The second point is four zero, isn't it? Four zero. So start. What is f of x x? F of x x is what? Six x minus twelve. Is that okay? So, where there is x, you put the value of x for this point. The value of x of this point is what? 4. So, 4 times 6? 12 of minus 12 of? 4 times that is, or oh, you've already found the final answer. 24 minus 12 of, you found it is 12 of. Good. So, that is 12 of. Then, f of x, y? 0. So, 0 is really about that. You just put it there, isn't it? Then, f of y, x? Zero. Zero is already a constant, you just put it there, isn't it? Then f of y, y, negative two is already a constant, you just put it there. Are we together? Are we together? Yes. Uh, so what is the determinant of that? To give you the discriminant. The product of the main diagonal 12 times negative two, negative 24 minus zero is just negative 24, isn't it? So are you seeing the discriminant is less than, negative 24 is less than zero, isn't it? So when it is less than zero, it implies it is a turning, turning point. So we need to know the nature of a turning point. Whether the turning point is a maximum point or a minimum point. So you use the first principle minimum, the f of x, x, the one by one matrix, giving you f of x, x, isn't it? So what is f of x, x? The first principle minimum, the one by one matrix of that linear. That is your matrix, this, which is just that f of x, x. You found it to be what? See, there's 12 of here. Are you seeing? It is 12. See, 12 is greater than 0. 
So when the when it is greater than it is a minimum, C greater than imply minimum point. So this implies that this stationary point 40 is a minimum is a minimum point. So this stationary point 40 is a minimum point and you have defined the two stationary points at their and their nature very good